Hello, my name is Brennan Dow. I work for the Wisconsin DNR in the Office of Great Waters Program as the Milwaukee Estuary and Sheboygan River Area of Concern Coordinator. Today, joining me on presenting about Lake Michigan, Wisconsin areas of concern is Bree Kupski. She is the Green Bay Program Coordinator, which covers the Lower Fox River Green Bay Area of Concern. We will be providing an update on the important work that is happening along the Lake Michigan coastline to address issues with our state's natural resources stemming from environmental degradation, legacy pollution, point non-point source runoff, as well as urbanization. Let's get started. First, I will be covering some basics around what makes an area on the Great Lakes an area of concern, or AOC, and what type of activities are done to fix AOCs. Second, we will cover the Milwaukee Estuary AOC and discuss the current approach to addressing contaminated sediments, which is one of the largest and most complex issues within an AOC. We will also talk briefly through some of the fish and wildlife related AOC projects, including an example of an exciting nearshore reef project that is at the beginning of stages of conceptual design with the Army Corps of Engineers. Lastly, Bree will be talking through work happening in the Lower Fox River Green Bay AOC she will cover the AOC's approach to deciding fish met metrics for identifying management actions, as well as describing an AOC project at, at the De Pere Dam that is also in conceptual di design with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. So what is an area of concern? An area of concern, or an AOC, is an area on the Great Lakes that has a history of significant environmental degradation caused by human activities preventing people and wildlife from fully using or enjoying the local waterways. The map you see on your screen is a map of the five Great Lakes, Superior, Michigan, Huron, Erie, and Ontario, with the 31 highly degraded shoreline areas in the U.S. that were identified as area of concerns in the 1980s. There are an additional 12 areas on the Canada side of the Great Lakes that are not identified on this map. Wisconsin has five area of concerns from north to south, the St. Louis River in the Lake Superior Basin and in the Lake Michigan Basin, the Lower Menominee River, Lower Fox River Green Bay, Sheboygan River, Milwaukee, and the Milwaukee Estuary. In 2020, the Lower Menominee River was the first Wisconsin area of concern removed from this list of degraded shoreline communities. Today we're going to scratch the surface on some of the important work that is happening in the Lower Fox River Green Bay and Milwaukee estuary areas of concern. So how do you fix an area of concern? To no longer be listed as an AOC, we must address the issues that aren't allowing the public to fully use or enjoy their water resources in a safe way, whether that's for eating, drinking, swimming, or fishing. In general, the work is organized into three objectives, cleaning up our waterways and improving water quality, restoring fish and wildlife habitat and populations, and improving outdoor recreational opportunities like swimming, boating, and fishing. So where is the Milwaukee Estuary AOC? The blue shaded areas on the map indicate the four watersheds for each of the rivers that feed into the AOC. Cedar Creek on the north side, Milwaukee south on the eastern side next along the coast of Lake Michigan, Menominee, and the Kinnikinnick. The Milwaukee Estuary AOC specifically focuses on the portions of these waterways that are highlighted yellow on this map. These areas are those that are targeted for cleanup of, of historical contamination and degradation that is not allowing the public to fully use the natural resources within the AOC. The AOC also covers two counties, Nozaki County to north and Milwaukee County. It also includes three tributaries, the Milwaukee, Menominee, and the Kinnikinnick, as well as three secondary tributaries, Lincoln Creek, Cedar Creek, and the Little Menominee River, as well as 13 municipalities. So it's a pretty large area. So what caused the issue? What's, what's the, which, where did the issue come from? Decades of heavy industrial use have polluted our waterways in Milwaukee to the extent that many of the industries are no longer around, leaving 90 to 95% of the contaminated sediments left behind as orphan meaning that there is no one directly and financially in charge of addressing the issue. These toxic chemicals, such as PCBs and PHs, as well as heavy metals, are contaminating the sediment at the bottom of the rivers. Removing these contaminants will make our waterways better for fish, wildlife, and humans. 
where will the cleanup take place? Cleanup will take place in the lower portions of the Milwaukee Estuary AOC. Previous cleanups occurred in Lincoln Park on the northern end of the AOC, as well as on the Little Menominee River and on the Kinniknik River. Shown on this map are the remaining locations. It covers roughly 12 miles of river in some areas of the Outer Harbor and near shore waters of Lake Michigan. The largest volume of contamination is found in the downtown stretch of the Milwaukee River in the heart of Milwaukee. This makes up roughly 35% of the total volume that is needed to be remediated in a complex urban part of the Milwaukee River. This includes 18 bridges or road crossings. It has complexity issues with shoreline, shoreline stability, as well as river walks, private docks, and combined sewage outfalls. How much material will be removed? Anywhere between one to two million cubic yards of contaminated sediment will be removed as part of this cleanup effort. To better understand the magnitude of this project, that is roughly six to 12 football fields filled five stories high with sediment. In comparison, it is more than three times larger than the amount of contaminated sediment that has already been removed in the Milwaukee AOC, as well as equally the same amount of sediment remediated in all the state of Wisconsin, not including Fox River cleanup. When, where, where is the contaminated sediment going to go? Most of the contaminated sediment will be transported through hydraulic pipelines and placed in a newly constructed dredged material management facility, or also known as a DMMF, that is specifically designed to safely store and contain contaminated sediment. Any toxic substances or sediment containing more than 50 parts per million PCBs will of course go to an EPA Toxic Substances Control Act approved disposal facility. The DMMF is the key component to feasibly addressing such a large volume of material. It saves roughly $100 million by not needing to go to a licensed landfill, which is approximately 146,000 dump trucks. That is 6.5 million miles less travel to the nearest landfill and a reduction of 1.3 million gallons of diesel fuel. Shown here on this image on the left hand side of your screen is the location of the proposed DMMF. It is located adjacent to the current facility, the CDF, the confined disposal facility that is currently being used for commercial operations and navigational dredging by the Army Corps of Engineers. There are still many items to figure out as the facility is going through additional iterations of design, but the goal is to have the facility constructed by 2024 to start this large cleanup within the AOC. Let's quickly switch some top topics to the fish and wildlife projects within the AOC, moving away from contaminated sediment there are a total of 26 projects within the AOC addressing a variety of different fish and wildlife impairments, some of which have already been completed, some are underway, and some have yet to begin. I don't expect everyone to read through the names for each of these projects as this chart um, doesn't really show well on the slide, but just understand that the, it shows the status for each of the different phases. Green is for those that have been completed, yellow are for those that are in progress, and red are for those phases that have not yet started. There is an interactive map, uh, the link is at the bottom of the screen for the AOC, through the AOC's Water Restoration Partnership webpage that you can follow in order to take a deeper dive into each of these AOC projects. However, for the purposes of this presentation and for the sake of time, I'm going to focus in on one of those projects. The Outer Harbor, for the Milwaukee Estuary AOC is an important transitional habitat um, that is the interface between the Inner Harbor and Lake Michigan, making it more like a river mouth. There's a project that's being proposed in the Outer Harbor called the Aquatic Enhancements to the Outer Harbor, and it encompasses many different types of habitats and varying depths that actually currently lack overall connectivity for native fishes. It is a 30 acre area on the northwest corner near the art museum and is at the center of two biological hotspots. The Summerfest Lagoon on the left side or west side of the outer harbor 
and the green break wall on the, the, in, the leeward side of the break wall. This area in between both currently has sparse macrophyte growth, minimal rocky habitat, and shallowing depths. While there are shallow water depths in this location, native macrophyte fragmentation and muck substrate are not conducive for growth with invasive macrophytes currently present in small isolated patches throughout the stretch of the shallower zone of the outer harbor. These isolated patches provide limited spatial connectivity in the outer harbor and may actually reduce fish colonization rates and recruitment. As shown here on the image to the left is an aerial image of the outer harbor focusing in in the background, the art museum and the 30 acre area where proposed enhancements will occur. These current plans are to add underwater restructures similar to the image on the upper right that encourage native fish colonization and recruitment, address wave attenuation, increase topography variability, and establish native macrophyte rootstock for improved diversity and abundance. On the lower right hand side of the screen is a conceptual drawing that has been developed as part of the design criteria for this project. We are looking to get through 30% design towards the end of this year and are hoping to uh, start implementation as funds become available. And finally, who are the partners for all this work? Um, just recently, last year, a partnership called the Waterway Restoration Partnership was formed and is currently made up of area of concern project sponsors within the Milwaukee AOC as well as other governmental and non-governmental organizations actively participating in AOC working groups and represents over 150 individuals and more than 20 organizations, some of which are shown here. Accomplishing the work necessary to get Milwaukee off the list of deg degraded shoreline communities cannot be done alone and requires significant level of collaboration and partnership Feel free to follow the link at the bottom of the slide to that web page to learn more. And you can also sign up for e-newsletters that go out to keep um, those updated that want to learn more. Thank you for uh, my portion of the presentation. Um, you can reach me by that contact information at the bottom of the screen. And I will hand it over to Bree to talk about the Lower Fox River Green Bay AOC. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Bree Kupski. I'm the Green Bay Program Coordinator with the Office of Great Waters at Wisconsin DNR. One of the roles I play is to coordinate activities within the Lower Green Bay and Fox River Air of Concern Program. Um, so why is the Lower Green Bay and Fox River, Fox River an area of concern to begin with? Um, the problems that we face in the seven mile stretch of the Lower Fox River and 21 square mile area of the Lower Bay of Green Bay generally fall into three categories. We had major PCB and other contaminated sediments as a result of historical paper mill operations. Um, we have poor water quality stemming from point and non-point source runoff from the Lower Fox River Basin, and we had significant loss of fish and wildlife habitat. Through our remedial action plan process, which works with local stakeholders to establish goals for remediation and restoration, we spent over 30 years since the original designation of the AOC in 1989 working to take this area out of its severely degraded state. Um, one example is, of this is that over the last 15 years, enough contaminated sediment was remediated from the Fox River that if you were to load up all that sediment into dump trucks and line them up, they span from Green Bay, Wisconsin, all the way to London, England. Um, this is the largest PCB remediation project um, to date globally. Um, it cost about a billion dollars to complete, and it was paid for in full by the parties responsible for the contamination. Another thing DNR and other partners are working on is reducing non-point and point source um, nutrient sediment pollution. Um, this is a long-term effort and its main mechanism um, by which we achieve these reductions is through um, work under the Lower Fox River TMDL program. Just within the Lower Fox River watershed, the cost to achieve TMDL goals is estimated to be upwards of about $500 million. Um, so it's really gonna take a lot of time, a lot of money and staff to get there. Um, and GLRI is one of the main sources of funding um, helping to achieve those goals. And so now that we've completed our sediment remediation projects and the TMDL implementation is well underway, another main effort is to improve fish and wildlife habitat through management actions, which really translates to fish and wildlife assessments and restoration projects. Um, we have a total of 22 priority fish and wildlife population groups who are attempting to improve um, through these management actions. 
Three of those are priority fish population groups, including um, Fox River fish, tributary fish, and shoreline fish. Our fishery metrics are focused on confirmation of existing and establishment of new designated habitat areas, um, or DHAs as we call them, um, which we pair with data on target species utilization. DHAs really represent the critical spawning, nursing, and feeding, nursery, excuse me, and feeding habitat utilized by each of these fish population groups. Um, to help us identify where there are currently designated habitat areas and where the system supported them in the past, we reviewed historical and contemporary information about habitat locations um, and fisheries data with local experts. We use these conversion curves to determine our baseline condition and then set goals for each priority population. Um, partners at the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, um, at UW Green Bay Coffrin Center for Biodiversity, and our Fish and Wildlife Technical Advisory Committee were instrumental in helping develop this assessment system, whereby each of our 22 different priority populations is assigned a score from 0 to 10, with 10 being the best possible condition, which you can see on the y-axis, and 0 being the worst possible condition. We averaged the scores of all those 22 AOC priority populations to come up with one comprehensive score that we're trying to achieve, which is a 6.5 out of 10. So that means in general, we want all 22 priority population groups to try to achieve a score of 6.5 out of 10 or higher. Both for our three fishery priority populations were determined through many conversations with resource managers and researchers on um, what their priorities are. And we paired that with the goals of the AOC program. Um, and ultimately what we came to consensus on is that we'd like to see several of these designated habitat areas present within the AOC boundaries that provide spawning and feeding habitat for target adult fish species. Um, but that we can't exceed a score of 6.5 out of 10 unless we see some additional utilization of these designated habitat areas by other life stages, such as young of the year or juvenile fish. And then we can increase the score even beyond that if we also see some utilization of these DHAs by uh, rare or sensitive species at any life stage. So for example, if you were on the x-axis um, or looking at the x-axis, if we were to have 10 DHAs established in the AOC, where we also observe target adult fish species at each of those locations, um, but no other life stages or rare or sensitive species, you'd basically just follow um, up to that conversion curve that represents the adult and target species on the x-axis and then over to the y, and you end up with a score of 6.5. Um, and then similarly, if all 10 had um, observed both adult and young of the year or juvenile life stages, you'd follow that 10 up to that next life stage, you'd end up with about a score of nine. And then if you had all 10 of these habitat areas um, supporting adult, young of the year, juvenile species, and rare and sensitive species, you'd end up with a score of 10. So this assessment method really gives us some flexibility in how we improve the condition score for priority fish and wildlife populations, but it also allows us to set some goals for utilization of habitat areas by other life stages and by those rare and sensitive species. So how do we determine what our baseline condition is and how do we move the needle to our target conditions? Um, we had three location, locations in the Fox River that we felt were already functioning as very important and high quality fishery areas. And we largely determined that through expert opinion and some data to back that up as well. Two areas being near the De Pere Dam and another being near the um, mouth of the river and some backwater slough habitat, which are represented as the green stars on the map. We also had a lot of other sites that we felt were providing some level of habitat, but they had a lot of room for improvement that we wanted to target for additional rest restoration activities. And those are identified as gold stars on the map. Um, not all of these are, are gonna be implemented through the AOC program, um, but some of the smaller projects have actually already been um, completed by the responsible parties for the sediment remediation project. Once we identified our target DHA sites, then we determined which target fish species to associate with each one of those designated habitat areas. Um, to help guide us in our restoration actions at each one of these locations. Some of the Fox River target species include sturgeon, walleye, lake whitefish, channel or flathead catfish, um, several different species of um, centricids, and muskie. So I'm just going to briefly discuss a project where we have some existing high quality habit, habitat and are in the very early stages of designing additional DHAs, and that's the um, De Pere Reef and Wetland Restoration Project. What we know about this area is that it currently functions as a really important walleye spawning area. And you can see from these photos and in this habitat mapping completed by Tucker et al. 2021, um, that we have quite a bit of dolomite bedrock habitat and shallower areas near the dam. This is part of why you can walk from boat to boat on, a Fox, on the Fox River right around this time of year, because it's such a desirable walleye fishing hotspot in the Great Lakes. We also know that this area historically supported a large riverine wetland slough um, that was lost and has never returned um, since the 1970s. 
Additionally, we recently learned through some of the work by Drew Ransom through his graduate thesis research at the UW Green Bay Aquatic Ecology Lab that this is an area where Lake Whitefish are responding as well. And then last but not least, um, these cobble nearshore areas depicted on the map are where we have quite a few sturgeon spawning annually. So this area is really already a very important fish refuge and habitat um, area for fisheries, but really in need of some improvements in additional habitat, particularly for sturgeon. Um, so historically, sturgeon were once so plentiful that there were stories of fishermen stacking them up like cordwood on the banks of the Fox River because there were so many, and they were damaging the fish nets because there were so many. Um, today, in addition to much of the population being extirpated, one of the issues that sturgeon face in this area is that historically they would have probably uh, spawn further upstream where there's less, less fish influence from Green Bay. Since they have to stop at the dam, the nearshore cobble area is really the only good habitat they can spawn in. And that area can be dewatered for long periods of time due to the fish and eggs can then become desiccated leading to mortality. You can see evidence of that in this nice visual from the UW Green Bay Aquatic Ecology Lab. So one of the main goals of the De Pere Reef and Wetland Restoration Project is to create approximately four acres of deeper water spawning and incubation habitat areas for sturgeon that will be outside of that fish influence. So we're working with the Army Corps of Engineers to develop a technical memorandum that's basically a feasibility study to evaluate if conditions in the river are currently suitable to implementing this type of habitat, and if there's anything, and if not, if there's anything that can be changed to provide this habitat for sturgeon. This works is, is being funded um, by US EPA through the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative and is one of three large scale habitat projects going through a similar process with Army Corps cur currently. The other two areas being the Duck Creek Delta and Longtail Point, which also have significant fishery habitat improvements planned. Some of the other work at De Pere that will be included um, as part of these design criteria include the reef habitat that I just described, native mussel habitat targeting species that commonly use our target um, fish species as host fish, Woody habitat installations along shoreline areas and reestablishment of potentially 60 acres of riverine wetland habitat in that slough area I talked about earlier. And in that area, we're really hoping to provide some good habitat for musky, largemouth bass, and sunfish. So we're expecting this uh, technical memorandum process to be complete by the end of this year for De Pere Dam Reef and Wetland Restoration Project. Going forward, we'd be moving to request additional GLRI and other funding to complete a full design over the next couple of years, and then hopefully have construction on the project starting around 2025. This is just an example of one of many projects for the AOC. It's a really exciting time to be working here, um, and there's gonna be a lot of opportunities for continued and new fisheries research. And the area is really just experiencing a lot of growth. So we're really looking forward to these projects improving um, fish and wildlife resources, as well as social and economic improvements for the region. And with that, thanks for listening.